Aloha everyone and welcome back to the Gilaway Eruption and Leilani Estates update for August 13th, 2018. I would like to start this update by saying welcome to all the new subscribers that's joined uh, my channel in the last few days. Uh, I really appreciate it and I hope you en enjoy this uh, update report. So with that said, um, let's get right to it. The USGS reports for Monday, August 13th, 2018 at 12.48 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time that the lull in eruptive activity on the lower east rift zone continues. A gas plume billows from the fissure 8 cone and a small lava pond is circulating sluggishly within its confines. The only red lava visible on the flow field itself is that oozing into the ocean between the Kopoho Bay and Ahalanui area coastline. Fresh black sand, created as molten lava is chilled and shattered by the surf, is being transported to the southwest by longshore currents and accumulating in the Poiki Small Boat Harbor, which is now blocked by a sandbar. The westernmost entry is about one kilometer from the harbor. It is common for eruptions to go through periods of diminished output or to pause completely only to return with renewed vigor days or weeks later. Resumption of the activity on the lower east rift zone could occur at any time and residents should remain informed and heed Hawaii County civil defense messages and warnings. SO2 emissions from the summit, Pu'o'o, and the lower east rift zone are all at low levels. Lower east rift zone emissions on August 5th through 6th were less than or greater than or less than 200 tons per day. Pu'o'o emissions on August 6th to 7th were 2 to 300 tons per day and some of the emissions when last measured on excuse me last measured on July 19th were around 100 tons per day this SO2 re release represents the lowest SO2 emitted from Kilauea for over a decade Despite the low emission rates, SO2 plumes were blown towards populated areas in East Hawaii by southeast winds on August 9th, and many individuals reported detecting the smell of sulfur. Weather conditions contributed to this, but in addition, as the eruption vents cooled down, a small, small amounts of hydrogen sulfide, or H2S, are generated. The human nose can detect H2S at very low levels, adding to the overall perception of increased sulfur emission. Up at the Kilauea Volcano Summit, summit seismicity continues to be low, with only three locatable earthquakes occurring per hour, maximum mag magnitude of 2.1. Summit deflation is also negligible. HBO will continue to monitor Kilauea closely for any signs of change in activity, and the next status report will be issued tomorrow morning unless significant changes occur. And that will do it for tonight's USGS update. Moving over to the EPA air monitoring sensor report. Uh, looking at the map, all dots are blue, which is a good. Looking at the sensor reports uh, measurements, we're showing that uh, all SO2 sensors within the area are showing 0.0, .0 parts per million, uh, which is also good. And that's to be expected with the uh, diminished output, well, the non-output from fissure 8. So we're going to now move on to the earthquake report. Looking at the USGS uh, earthquake map, uh, we're looking at a filter of one day, all magnitudes. Uh, as we can see, we've got a, three little orange dots down there uh, in the Volcanoes National Park. That's that area shaded in green. And uh, Leilani Estates is up there on the uh, right-hand side of the island in that little tiny almost diamond shaped green square in between the, the two uh, highways. So as you can see those are pretty far away from us. So there's really pretty much nothing to report but we're going to go ahead and take a, a look at the seven day just to, to see what's been going on for the last week. And as we can see there's really not much to see. Uh, this is all the quakes been in this area within the last seven days. Uh, all magnitudes. Uh, most of these are majority uh, of 2.0 uh, or lower, I do believe. Uh, looking there over on the list of the left, uh, 1.9, 1.5, 1.9, uh, 2.4 there, 2.1. So yeah, I'd say an average between 1.5 and 2.5 quakes. Um, those are really not uncommon to see a few of them here and there around the island anyways. Uh, however, you know, this is a little bit, you know, this in this area, uh, of course, that's of course related to the volcanic activity that we're going through um so but i still see you know like i pointed out last night that that little you know 
uh, line uh, of quakes there. Uh, so I don't know exactly what that's representing that's happening on the ground, but uh, I don't know if it's movement of magma or movement of the land, but uh, it's obviously one of the two, um, but nothing too severe. And that'll do it for tonight's general update report. And now it's time for our favorite little segment. But before I do that, there's something I want to share with you and, and tell you about uh, real quick. My patrons over on Patreon, my Patreon page already know about this, but uh, the majority of you don't. Um, I have released a new version of Mongoose on Watch t-shirts, and other great items. Um, you can find it on my Redbubble account. Uh, links will be in the description. And with no further ado, let me show you the great new graphic. So it's official now. The Mongoose now has his own street sign. Um, I hope you like it. Uh, I, I really enjoyed making it. It was actually kind of fun. And it was a nice little challenge. Uh, this was the one of the little projects that I was going to work on last or this weekend uh, past and uh, so uh, I hope you enjoy it uh, like I said it's available on t-shirts and other stuff which is on my Redbubble links will be in the description etc so now let's get to look at that there and the first picture we're going to look at is this one right here and if you look at that there that is uh, Isaac Holly Park and the Poho Iki boat ramp uh, which launched into a small lagoon that opened to the the bay. However, this black sandbar that we've been watching grow, and I showed you last night had almost closed off uh, the boat ramp entrance, uh, has officially done so. Uh, the boat ramp uh, water that you see there right in the middle of the screen is technically a little lake now, a pond. Actually, I think it would be more appropriate, a pond. Uh, and I'm, I'm curious how the, the tides are going to affect that. And um, also looking at this image, it makes me ask a question as well, is if that black sand has been washing down the shoreline, I wonder if it's making the uh, bay area more shallow, you know, filling it in, making it more sandy on the bottom. Uh, you never know, this could ultimately turn this area into a beautiful little black sand beach cove area. Uh, it could be perfect for swimming. Uh, we don't know. Again, it's one of these things that uh, we don't know what we've got until we've got it. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to watch how this plays out. I wonder how the tides are going to affect the sandbar. Uh, and, and a bunch of other little interesting things I'm sure that might happen here. So we'll have to keep an eye on it. Okay, I was looking at this photo earlier. It's one that we've seen before, uh, a fissure aid, uh, three or four days ago, I think it's been. However, I, I noticed something else in this photo when I was looking at it again. But I, you can only see it if, if I zoom in really close. So I'm going to do that now. Now, if you look, there on the left... Uh, bottom left corner of the screen, through in the smoke, you see this this white uh, roof line of a house there. And, oh, and by the way, this is Luana Avenue, uh, Malama side. But anyways, back to the house. Uh, that house is, you see the roof line. The black that's covering it is the cinder and the tephra from the fissure rate cone eruption. Uh, you can see there it's covering the house roof. Uh, if you look in the back, to the left, uh, which is the backyard of this house, you can see that it's also covering the catchment and, and other items out there, and it's blanket, blanketing the, the lawn uh, around the house as well. Now, if you look over towards the right, across the street to the neighbor's house, you, you see the, the same thing there. Um, and of course, uh, the, the lawn is covered, and, and all the, the bare spots in the vegetation are covered uh, in this tephra. In some places, it can be uh, quite deep. Um, but if you look going down the road, uh, you don't see uh, as much you know, going back towards Malama. And the reason why is the wind currents. The wind currents, you know, we're blowing it pretty much that way and off diagonally to the right and, and back up towards, you know, my area, uh, the top of Leilani, and that's where a lot of it was getting deposited, kind of like in this little channel area. And it would all depend on, you know, how strong the winds were and which direction they were flowing, uh, that, you know, what area got 
you know, uh, the stuff dumped on it and uh, how far you away, you know, determine how much. So the closer you were, the, the deeper it is, you know, and the further away you were, you, you know, I got it like, you know, what I got, you know, a few pieces, you know, scattered across the yard. So I just want to point that out. It was quite interesting to see it uh, in a photo because I, I don't think I've noticed it before, even though I'm sure it's, it's in many other photos as well. Okay, and that'll do it for tonight's look at that there. Sorry it's so short. Uh, there's really not a lot uh, of images available right now. Um, so what I want to do though uh, at the end here is I want to uh, answer a question from a, a viewer that was asked in the comments uh, asking about uh, all the new land that was uh, made by this eruption so far and uh, how is property uh, ownership determined. Um, okay, real simple, uh, we'll, we'll just go over the, the basics. Uh, any pr existing uh, mapped, you know, and plotted properties registered with the, with the county and the state, uh, even if they're covered with lava, you know, everything within those property boundaries of that lot is still owned by the, the owner period it's still their land they just got new land on top of it and so the elevation of their property is now higher that's pretty much you know the only difference that that really makes in that respect however uh the new land that was made on the coastline uh that was not existing land and was water becomes uh public property and uh you know is, is then put into the custody of the state however we do have uh, laws here that do give uh, all shorelines uh, public access so basically so many feet or whatever it is from the water line up is is public property and and is you know uh, basically you have the rights to have public access to uh, not all areas are accessible of course but the ones that are uh, access has to be granted which is pretty cool so hey right, guys that'll do it for tonight if you like this video don't forget to hit the thumbs up button it really helps me a lot and I really do appreciate it uh, if you haven't subscribed yet don't forget to hit the, the subscribe button and the bell icon too to get notifications uh, so I just want to say thank you for watching and I hope you have a great morning afternoon or evening this has been the Kilauea eruption and Leilani estates update for August 13th 2018